Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. Today I want to take a step back and, and go very high level and talk about why DeFi is important. And when I say DeFi, I don't mean necessarily DeFi in terms of only uh, Ethereum and, and um, AMMs and yield farming and all that. I'm talking about decentralized finance overall, and that's uh, that, that started with Bitcoin, and that's the idea of a cryptocurrency or some sort of finance that is kind of a peer-to-peer -peer network and the building out of the composability of this peer-to-peer -peer network that, that continues to grow the ecosystem and grow participation and what I mean by all that. So first, I want to remind you, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8. So we're going to talk a little bit about why DeFi is important and this uh, struck me as I was listening to a, actually an old podcast from uh, 2019 that Tim Ferriss did with a, a gentleman named Graham Duncan uh, who, who is with a family office, works, works with other family offices and um, was talking about what he's good at, why he's good at what he, what he does and part of that explanation was that he's, he knows he's not the greatest at everything but he's really good at finding the people who are good at what they do and allocating to those people. And it got me thinking about what overall the financial ecosystem, the financial system, capital markets are all about. And it, this is not from an economist. We're not economists. We're not hardcore PhDs in finance. But when you really uh, come back to what we think finance is all about, it's about efficiency. It's about finding efficiency. And what do I mean by that? I mean... The whole point is you want to find an efficient place for your money, an efficient use of your money. And so all these capital markets are just about trying to get money from inefficient uses to more efficient uses. And that does not mean I'm always getting the highest return for my dollar. It doesn't mean I'm always searching for the highest return. What it means is we're trying to efficiently allocate capital around the country and around the world to more efficient means. So as an example, let's say I have uh, money sitting um, at my house. I have cash sitting at my house under my mattress or something. That is an extremely inefficient place to keep money um, be, because it, it doesn't do much for me there. It's cash. The only way I can really interact cash-wise is if I take it out from under my mattress and go somewhere and buy something and that place happens to accept cash and I can pay cash for it. It's a very in-person transaction. It is not very efficient at all. The only time it's efficient is if the value of everything goes down and I'm sitting here holding cash, uh, then the value of my cash ideally hasn't gone down. The value of my cash has actually gone up. So that's really the, the time that it's efficient. Now I can move that to potentially a bank account. Maybe this is a little bit more efficient because the bank account maybe pays me a little interest, although they're not going to be doing very much of that for, for any time in the near future. But what it does is from the bank, now I can disperse it, right? So I can uh, I can pay for things using the internet, I can write a check, I can use my debit card, uh, I can use a, a transfer uh, around the world, I can use ACH, I can use SWIFT, all these ways that I can now transact with that money and it's become a little bit more efficient. I can do more things with it now. Okay, it's not necessarily growing, so this isn't all that much because the percentage they're paying me isn't all that much, but there's actually more that I can do with it at this point. From there, you get into investing, potentially, right? So what, what can I invest in? What's the whole point? The whole point is there are other people out there who uh, are, are doing things to build companies, to build business, to bring in money, to grow wealth. And they're not thinking, I'm growing wealth. They're thinking, I'm doing my business, but they're really good at what they do, better at what they do than I would be at that thing. So what's an example of that? There might be uh, someone who's really good at buying real estate and, and, and making sure that it goes up in value. And again, that's, most people think of like, I buy, some, I buy a piece of real estate and it's in a really good location and it, and it doubles in value in like five years. But what it's really about is can I buy real estate that usually I can put some sort of tenants in. So if it's commercial real estate or residential real estate, someone who's paying me rent and I'm so good at finding that piece of property 
and either developing it or fixing it up or somehow making more people pay rent than we're paying before and therefore grow the value. So if I invest my money in that company, I'm more likely to have money coming back to me. Now, that particular manager, so again, we can talk about real estate in this, you know, although it's among other investments, right? That particular manager of that didn't go out and say, I can efficiently allocate your capital if you give it to me. What they said is, I'm really good at my job. I'm good at what I do. This is what I know. This is what I spent my time and, and money and my career doing. And so all, all I need really is some of your money and I can allocate it and, and grow it because without your money, I don't have enough to go buy this real estate. I don't have enough to grow. So it's about allocating to that. Investment might be something like in the public markets, right? Look, I might think that, uh, so that, that mobile phones, that mobile technology is going to be huge. That doesn't mean I'm capable of going out and building cell phones and selling them. Apple's capable of that. Samsung is capable of that. They're really good at what they do. So why wouldn't I allocate my funds to them and let them go do it? Because they are going to be able to, they have the manufacturing, they have everything already built out. I'd rather allocate my money to them. And we don't always think about investing in that way, but what I'm doing is taking money that I could otherwise have sitting under my mattress and letting someone else go do something more efficient with it. And that efficiency helps me because hopefully I get some sort of gains, but it also helps everyone in the world because they're actually efficiently dispersing it and growing overall wealth. Okay, they're growing the, the GDP of the world by doing something more efficiently than I could do. They're, they're consolidating what they have because if everyone tried to go make their own cell phone, if this is a, an old, you know, a, agrarian economy that everyone kind of would have to fend for themselves, we wouldn't be very efficient. This is mass efficiency. So a little bit about in investing overall and the whole financial ecosystem is I'm trying to get my money to something that is going to be more efficient. Okay. So that all brings me to what has happened here in, in our uh, overall financial system is we've developed this um, financial ecosystem in between essentially individuals, right, over here with, with money and all these, um, we'll call them needs, but, but managers, people who are entrepreneurs essentially, somehow going to grow wealth, whether that's through building a business, whether that's through investing, lending, whatever it is, they're, they're growing a business. And there's this um, in, in between that has developed a tremendous amount of fees and friction. Now, it's not a bad thing because what we've had to do is outsource a lot of trust to this. Okay, so whereas um, it, it became popular, the thought with the internet and everything that I can take my money, potentially, and invest it in, uh, you know, right now I can invest in big public companies, maybe I can invest in some private companies, um, Maybe I, I can't right now, maybe I'm not accredited, but I, I can maybe do that right now. I can go into a uh, fund, for instance, I can invest in a fund, and maybe this fund is finding some you know, small manufacturing company in some other country, okay, or small farm, or something that's, that's happening in another country or, or wherever, that is opening up new possibilities because here in, in the, the developed world, we've explored so many of these possibilities. So I can invest in, in say, a fund that does that. Or I can invest in a fund that invests in startup companies, right? Maybe, maybe if I'm able to do that, I can invest in a fund that invests in startups. And look, what I'm doing is I'm outsourcing this ability for them to be really good at their job. Right? And what they're doing is they're either going through all these startups and deciding and they have a track record. We know how to look for them. We know how to find them. I know how to go to other countries, to India and Africa and South America and Central America and find these great little manufacturing companies or great little farms or distribution companies or something and invest in them. But you need to pay me some sort of fee to do that. Right? So they go and, and find that and, and the internet became this. I, gave us this idea that, my gosh, now we're going to be able to fund all these uh, smaller companies or smaller family farms or smaller family manufacturing companies or smaller groups around the world because now we know more about them. But what happened is we ran into a plumbing problem. And the plumbing problem we ran into is, one, someone has to go find them. 
Okay, someone has to find them and evaluate them. And then we have to get them the money. So what's happened is you either have funds that go get our money and then pass them on, right? and get back to us with data, which is reporting, which is information about how these companies are doing. Okay? But the problem is they're having to go through the banking system that's been built, right? the banks uh, and the other financials that have things like SWIFT and things like ACH and ways that, that they're charging fees and they're creating more friction here. Again, it's not that bad because in the absence of that, there's no way we would have found these and there's no way we would even know how to evaluate them and get the data and get the information we need. So it's not an inherently bad thing. It just is what it is. We didn't have the technology to be able to get to them at any point. We had to go through banks and we had to go through funds because that's how money flowed. Another thing to point out is, and this doesn't get looked at that, that often, but on a dollar, a euro, whatever, you go out two decimal places. That, and that's just because that's, that's as far as we could go out, right? A hundredth of a dollar. So we're going to talk about that in a moment, but that's something to, to keep in mind. So now the question is, okay, where are we? How, how does DeFi, how does decentralized finance fit into this? Well, if instead of this, let's say you now have this layer here called decentralized ledger technology because it could be a blockchain, it could be some other DLT, whatever it might be. Now imagine this, these folks are sending information onto this DLT, this decentralized ledger technology, which has all the great characteristics we like. It's immutable, right? It's transparent, right? All, all these great characteristics we like of it. I, having the money, can read that information somehow and decide, look, this is a really good place I, I want to um, invest my money. Maybe it's a small loan to them, and maybe they say, look, I can offer XYZ as collateral or here's the contract that every quarter, every month I'm going to pay you and I can get the data automatically, right? So I can put my money into this and there's an efficient transfer, okay? Because it's done over the crypto or of the blockchain rails. My money can go straight to them. I can then get even more information based on the report, based on what's actually happening. And the crypto can go back to me and I can be making money and they, more importantly, can be raising money from other people in the world. Now, you go, okay, someone's going to have to maybe read all this. You can have a, a new type of fund manager that reads this information that's coming off here. It doesn't have to be even near these people, but knows how to read it, knows how to get it and say, look, I can read this and I can get investors, and I can disseminate, di disperse this money, but I don't have to have all the fees and friction right here because I'm going to put my information onto this decentralized ledger technology and let someone else put their money in, and I will send them back some sort of return with reporting and, and smart contracts and such. And keep in mind now, you can go anywhere from eight to 18 decimal places in terms of your money. So I can put smaller amounts in, they can get smaller amounts, which means it's less risk to me because we don't have all those fees and all that friction um, and, and there's less risk. Now remember, these people can also take this info and go get something like insurance coverage because they're putting all their data on this immutable transparent blockchain. They can go get insurance. Guess what? I can invest in that insurance if I want to. I can say, look, I'm just going to insure, help insure these people, and based on this data, maybe this fund manager reads this data and provides some level of insurance. So you see where this decentralized ledger technology, because of the immutability and the transparency of it, the fact that we can get data, right, and of course we have to talk about things like oracles and, and custody and wallets and all that, that, that we've talked about in these videos, but I want to talk about why DeFi is so important because it takes some of these small manufacturers, these small, these needs and can sync them up in a way with the money that's trying to get there. And it's not a charitable thing. It's not a charity thing. It's they can actually help grow and create wealth and they can provide for their people. But in doing so, 
I can get a return on my investment. It's maybe non-correlated to everything else that's going on in the world. It's ways that I can find them. It's the flow of information. It's the fact that this info can get on here and be immutable and transparent and also private and protected, but someone knows how to read the data, just the raw data, and go, oh, this is a great investment. I'm going to put that information on here that Adam can take his hard-earned cryptocurrency and invest in. So that's a little bit about why this is all important. It's a, b because the economy, the financial ecosystem is all about getting money from where it's least efficient to where it's more or most efficient. And that doesn't always mean getting the highest returns, it just means efficiency based on my particular situation and based on their particular situation. This is why decentralized finance is important, because it can be relatively peer-to-peer, -peer, because information can be immutable and transparent and therefore can be read and used. Uh, to create even greater efficiencies. That is a little about why decentralized finance is important, why we do all these videos and this education, why this ecosystem is trying to grow, and it goes beyond just creating more yield, right? All those systems that have been created, the, these DeFi um, protocols uh, have, been, have been there to create yield, but they're creating necessary systems, stable coins and such, to be able to actually transact and create this system that is actually needed in order to grow, continue to grow the world economy and create more participation from these sides by lowering the fees and the friction that have been created in between that we've needed because we've outsourced the trust to some of those companies and they got to get paid right? But now we have technology that can help replace, not completely replace, but help replace some of that. That's a little bit about why DeFi, decentralized finance, is so important. We hope you enjoy this. We hope you'll subscribe to the channel here. We hope you'll find us on YouTube or, or on uh, Twitter, at Interaxis8, and we'll see you in the next video.